Well, welcome uh, to this two-hour seminar on bar pain. Um, <coughs> if you look around you, um, there's about 82 bark paintings on the walls. And uh, you can think of them as like, almost like looking at a magnificent uh, fresco in, um, you know, in Europe, a Giotto fresco or something like that. You get a feeling for, if you just imagine that, you get a feeling for the source of the inspiration of these paintings and where they've actually come from, which is originally from cave painting. A lot of people actually think that uh, bath paintings were done all over Australia, but that's not the case. Um, bath paintings were a particular art form unique to the Northern Territory, to, to Arnhem Land. Uh, although people did paint on ephemera made out of bark. So, so initially, here we are up in Arnhem Land, as you can see, and, uh, art and bark paintings were made um, eventually right across Arnhem Land, although at first they were made, uh, bark was used uh, for utilitarian purposes. So first of all, you need to understand that making bark, stripping bark of trees, uh, and making them into, you know, making bark into whatever we wanted to use it for, whether it was string, uh, beautiful double plied string, whether it was uh, uh, into um, uh, canoes like over here, uh, into baskets like that Tiwi Tunga at the bottom here, which is a, um, a bark basket, as the Tiwi people had didn't make uh, we, uh, woven pandanus baskets uh, like the mainland tribes, or whether it was made for uh, bark shelters that were used during the dry season when people moved out around their country um, uh, during the wet season, of course. They lived uh, in Arnhem Land, they lived in caves and, um, and, cave sh and rock shelters. So, of course, uh, by the time white people came here, the only evidence of that of that uh, art form were the uh, were the cave paintings that, uh, that somehow the ochre had become siliconized and embedded into the into the rock and have lasted for time immemorial. So, uh, but um, but of course those same people uh, during the dry season were moving around the wetlands. Uh, and living in bark shelters like these Yongu shelters here, up off the ground to protect them from crocodiles and um, and uh, snakes and the like, uh, but still protected from the rain by the slabs of bark. And just as they did in the caves, they would paint on the sides of the bark uh, shelters. Why? Well, that's uh, there's a whole range of suppositions about that. Um, of course, when you look at the cave walls in Arnhem Land today, you see plenty of depictions of spirit figures um, that indicate that these were probably ceremonial sites uh, where certain rites and rituals were practiced. But, but you also see, and uh, more often than not, a handprint like stenciled on the, on the walls, uh, like in Carnarvon Gorge in Queensland, uh, or you see um, uh, totemic animals uh, and re recording of contemporary events. You even see images of the, the ships, the Macassan prowls, and even as late as World War I, supply ships and, um, and, uh, and the coming of white people and the first forces, etc., all on cave wall. Well, um, and that's really where this bark came in. So they knew how to make bark, they knew how to take it off a tree, they, and, you, and here you can see the remnants, that's, what, that's a tree from which um, a piece of bark was originally taken, and uh, which was probably made into some artifact or other, or, or maybe it was made into a bark shield, or, um, or maybe it was even dug deeper and made into a wooden shield. But of course, if you take a whole piece of bark, like over here, and take it right from around the tree, it kills the tree. Um, and the uh, artisan would normally uh, 
bless the tree and the great spirit for providing it um, um, as part of the ritual, of taking the bark. And once the bark is taken off, it's very, it's very thick and it's sort of, um, as you can see, and it's got all the outer bark. But it's what they're after is that inner bark, just around the cambium there. So, so um, they would take that bark and, and heat it over hot rocks and uh, with uh, with hot sand and slowly dry it out and move it around, and move it around, and move it around until it became a dried and a dried perfectly flat. They put the hot rocks on top of it and. And a master technician could make a piece of bar so way the thin, like this one here, like it's less than a millimetre thick, <coughs> and yet that bar is over 20 years old, uh, splendid. Uh, people often ask, just by the way, as an aside, oh, bar paintings, you know, I don't know how to deal with it. You know, they call it art, but it's not on canvas. I know a canvas is last, you know, but a piece of bark's going to warp or split. Or you know, girl, or, the truth is that if a bark doesn't warp or split in the first year or two that it's made, it's never going to be. Most of the barks on the wall here are up to 30, 40 years old, mm -hmm. some 50 or 60 years old, and they are as uh, splendid technically as they were when they were originally made. So, um, so here we have the barks, so we can see how bark painting is originally made. Now, uh, the, the another thing is that people think that, oh, bark painting is uh, an ancient tradition that's been done there. Not true. We talk about bark painting as if it's a traditional art form, as opposed to, say, desert painting on canvas that began in the 70s, and we all know the, um, the prevailing myth of, of jet bark and the whole thing, which is true, but, but the fact is that Aboriginal paintings did not begin in the Pandya with uh, Jeff Bard. Uh, they began a long time before that. And when I first opened my gallery in 1980, ten years after Bard uh, was in the Pandya, uh, Bard paintings were still the epitome of Aboriginal fine art. If you'd come into our gallery in 1980, what you would have seen on the wall, or what you see around you right in that Bard paintings, you wouldn't have seen a dot painting in sight. And we didn't start to even begin to put dot paintings into our gallery until, I don't know, the mid-80s, really. Um, so it's an amazing thing when you think about it.